Welcome back, everybody, to Words with Wayman. I am your host, Matt Wayman, here as always. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Um, to all of our past episodes, check them out online, agency.com slash podcast, everybody. Uh, we've been getting some good feedback online, everybody, so uh, thanks for listening, as always. we got a special guest today. We're going to hop right into it, everybody. Um, young man, young boy, uh, boy man, as he asked me to call him. Um, local Denver comedian um, Roger Stafford, everybody. Hello. Hey, everybody. So you know this is a creative-driven podcast, everybody out there. Um, so I brought him on today to just kind of talk about... I talk to a lot of people that like make all their money uh, solely off the thing that they do. So I thought it'd be cool to kind of like bring you over and talk about... You're kind of like newer into the game, kind of like working mm-hmm. a day job. Yeah, I make um, no money off of the thing yeah, that I do. Yeah, absolutely no. Yeah. No cash. I mean, I'll give you a dollar after this and then you can be <laughs> a professional. Um but that's kind of the thing. So it's it, you're coming from a completely different perspective as anybody else that does make their money off of it, mm-hmm. you know, which I thought would be kind For of sure. cool. So I always like to start. Uh, where where are you from originally? Where's the uh, where are Illinois? You born? Illinois. Yeah, about an hour south of Chicago, a little town called Morris. Morris. Um, near Juliet. Juliet okay. is the one I say a lot of some people know that one. You rep yeah. Juliet. That's yeah, uh, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> so it was that small of a town where it's just near this other little spot. Exactly. Nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How, we're big family, little family. Um, seven of us. Seven. Five kids. Whoa. Yeah, so big. Yeah, I guess that's why. It's we're funny, people. I, I don't want to call it big, but because I, I knew families that had like eight kids, mm-hmm. and that's huge. But uh, I guess five is a lot to some people. Yeah. I yeah. guess it is a lot to some people. I mean, yeah. we I had three brothers, so it's like yeah. at least decently big enough. But yeah, especially mm-hmm. like when you know kids are expensive too. Like mm-hmm. These days, you don't see. It. I don't know how my parents did that. Yeah, just buying in bulk, I guess. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of stews or something like that. <laughs> something like that. Where are you at in, the, in between the makeup of the kids? Uh, I'm the oldest. The old. Whoa. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm 19, and then it goes. All the way down to eleven. My youngest brother is eleven. That's crazy. That's a, all in a pretty short period of time as well. Or mm-hmm. Like let's one a year. Yeah, pop, popping one out. That's about. that's how my mom liked it. I, I guess. Mean, I, I guess so. I guess you know you you're just so used to that all the time. You might as well just mm-hmm. keep it going through. You know. Yeah. Probably yeah. take a couple of years off having a baby, and it's probably harder after you have another baby. I guess so. Yeah. She was an only child, so I think she was like, I just want friends. I want mm-hmm. a ton of people. Were you guys religious? Was that a thing yes. too? Yeah, what yeah. Religion? Uh, Baptist. Baptist. Mm-hmm. Those kids. I mean, yeah. I think my mom was one of seven. Uh, is what like seven? Okay. So yeah. it was yeah, big Catholic family. But it mm-hmm. usually follows like some sort of religious. Yeah, thing, you exactly. Know? That's the only reason it appears. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to have that many kids. I think. Yeah, and yeah, to you know have a lot of money for for tithing or the free donut Sundays they probably <laughs> make. <laughs> yeah, that you can feed them mostly for free. With feed the kids <laughs> with one day a month or something like. That. That's yeah. cool. Were you pretty uh, creatively driven as a young man, like um, growing up? A little bit, I guess. I always wanted to be a writer. Mm-hmm. I always, I always said that. Like I, that was pretty. Yeah, that was all I said I wanted to do from an early age nice. and stuff. Did you read and a lot? Probably. Then? Yeah, yeah. As a kid, I, I actually. I did most of my reading at like eight and nine years old. I read like a book a day when I was Whoa. when I was that young, and then I kind of fell out of it as a teenager and started watching movies and other mm-hmm. kind of you know other stuff. But. uh yeah, I, I liked it a lot. I and I always, I always wanted to be a writer. Comedy didn't really become a thing until I was like fifteen or sixteen. Mm-hmm. Which I mean, comedy, if you, I mean, is a writer's game. Yeah, you know anything about that? Mm-hmm. Did you ever do any like essay contests or like English stuff like that? Um, no, not really. Um, uh, in, uh, literature and stuff like that was definitely always my favorite subject. That was like the only thing I would actually try at in school and stuff. Yeah. Um, and I always got my best grades in that. I think. Nice. But uh, but even then, I hated it because I hate I hated doing that because I hated writing, you know, what somebody was telling me to write. Oh yeah, which is so yeah, prepackaged, writer. especially like history essays and stuff like yeah. that. It's never anything that you really yeah want. Yeah, I mean, especially until like you find uh, I think to a lot of writers that you respond to that did kind of write from their own voice and write whatever they wanted to. You kind of when they try to put you into that box, it's mm-hmm. it sucks. Yeah. Cause yeah, it, but exactly. then you write something really weird, and the English teacher likes it, but he's like, no, I can't do this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this yeah. is a little bit too much. Well, that's cool. Did you ever do any performance at all? Um, No, not really. I was in, like, church choirs as a kid, mm. but I didn't uh, do 
anything. I think the closest thing I I was in Christmas plays as a kid. Yeah, I used to do those and I too. I used to I used to like them a little bit. Like uh, I don't remember any of my lines, and I <laughs> never got to you know write any of it or anything. But I remember really liking just being up there. Just oh yeah, it. and, and so I, many people and I, watching you. Yeah, and I always would look for. Yeah, looking back on it, I was always looking for the spots where I could get a laugh with stuff. Yeah, I really liked that. I think that's one of the things. And then after you get your first couple, or if you do, it's it's kind of a hook after that. Yeah, yeah it's exactly. like finding the thing that you know that because it's. I mean, that's a drug, if mm-hmm. anything, you know. Yeah, especially all those people watching you in those plays. Yeah, I remember I did. I was like Joseph one year. Mm-hmm. Did it all. Well, we we had weirdly. At our church, we had unique Christmas. Like it wasn't just the classic. Alternative. Well, yeah, somewhat. <laughs> but it was written by this one, this one guy that wrote a bunch of children's plays, and it was all sent, it was always the same themes and stuff, obviously. Yeah. But uh, I remember there was one where I had, uh, I can't remember what the story was, but I was playing like a robber that was gonna steal all this family's Christmas presents, <laughs> and then they were gonna <laughs> the like French. learn the mean the true meaning of Christmas without material items and whatever, but. I remember, like, I got to walk away with all those boxes, and, like, I was walking down the aisle, and I just, like, tripped at one point purposefully and threw all the boxes, and it got a huge laugh. Yeah. And I was like, this is amazing. This is the best. That's awesome. Like, they didn't make me do that, but, like, I just purposefully, like, just physical comedy. I think <laughs> physical comedy is the way to go. Oh, always. it's so much I'm fun. I'm trying to bring it back into stand-up so much comedy. Fun. <laughs> just doing some Pratt Falls, doing mm-hmm. some, like, have somebody come up and fake punch me, something like that. <laughs> I think, not, I think the, uh, pe- we're underutilizing physical comedy yeah. in the stand-up game. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> we used to do, I did an improv troupe, but we were just pretty much, we did it, f- like, solely physical stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It's just like, that's, yeah. it's it's the first place comedy starts, you know. It's exactly. People love to see people fall. Mm-hmm. God, that's one of my favorite things. That's <laughs> <laughs> the simplest too. Yeah, it's like the essence of of comedy is just somebody with a high status or some status at all mm-hmm. eating shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, favorite. that's awesome. What did you? How were you in high school? Um, in high school, I didn't. Um, I didn't really do any performing, and that was actually when I was probably doing more of my writing because that's when nice. I had more of a real literature class and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I was homeschooled growing up, so okay. I didn't have till what grade? All of it, whole Whoa. way through every every grade. Or I was public schooled in kindergarten. Okay. But uh, they're like we don't trust this anymore. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like this is too much. He's seen too much already. Yeah, he he is nailing it. No, we can't <laughs> get him out of there. <laughs> yeah, but uh, in high school, yeah, I did more writing, and then. 15 i started to discover stand-up mm-hmm. um and i had seen a little bit before that but i started listening to podcasts and it yeah, started yeah, introducing yeah. me to a lot of the you know that first wave of like la podcasts like oh, yeah. Nerdist and wtf and you made it weird and i was mm-hmm. listening to all of those and learning about so much comedy and stuff and then uh yeah the ins and outs because i mean those are just like that's like the inside just like stuff. exactly yeah and that's what got me into it like even before i was watching stand-up I want. I was lear- just learning about how comedy is done, then the community yeah. around it and Which stuff. I, that had a huge part to play with, like people yeah. following stand-ups and like you know yeah. actually knowing the inside business of it all mm-hmm. and like be, like being like comedy nerds almost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, and I love that stuff. And then as soon as I started listening to those and. I heard about open mics on one of them, yeah. and I was like, oh, I can do it? Okay. So did you have the opportunity at that point? Were you still living at home and all that jazz at that point? Yeah, and uh, I found, yeah, I, I performed a little bit when I was 17, still cool. at home. I found this place in Joliet. It was this, uh, it was like a, a music or something. Yeah, it was a donut shop and a deli <laughs> by day. And then at night, these punk rock kids would come in and turn it into a, an open mic for whatever. And That's it was mostly awesome. it was mostly punk rock. Yeah, it was cool as fuck. And it's still... That uh, sounds dope. Yeah, and even looking back on it now, that was a great room. Anything like we were like, by day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but <laughs> was, by night. Yeah, it was run by this old Polish guy, and he didn't check IDs or anything, so people were dr- underage of course drinking he didn't. there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it was actually, it was a cool room and it was, I was super lucky to get to try yeah. stand up there because it was, it would be like trying stand up on too much fun at the deer pile. Like so it was like that kind of crowd. No, that's awesome. And especially cause they were probably there to see a lot of music and stuff like exactly. that too. So this juxtaposition of like yeah. this young kid yeah. trying comedy was probably awesome. No, I think most of my laughs just came off of that. Just yeah. charming. Like, Oh, well, I also think, yeah, yeah, you do have a lot of different premises because you know, of you being like homeschooled and having all this different stuff happen to you growing up, you know? Mm. Then a, a lot of people do too. So it's probably like these punk rock kids, and like you probably had the anger too. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Just yeah. like rebelling against and doing comedy in a, in a goddamn donut shop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it was it was really cool. And I did that 
uh, maybe 10 or 15 times. Yeah. And then uh, my dad said I wasn't allowed to go there anymore. And I was like, okay, so I'm moving. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so that's when you moved out? Yeah. I turned. Uh, he told me that I turned 18, and then I was like, I just started looking for somewhere else. Was it all, you think, related to the fact that it was not it was not looked at good in the religious senses? Yeah, that was, that yeah. was all of it, yeah. And I never found the specific... Cause it had taken me forever just to convince him to let me go. Yeah. Uh, he didn't want me to go at all at first. And I finally convinced him. And I was, I basically told him, I was like, if you don't let me go, I'm going to take the car and I'm going to go. Like, yeah, you're going yeah. to you're gonna have to stop me from going. And, Something uh, this is going to happen. Yeah, exactly. And uh, so he finally let me go. And then he told me to stop. And actually, right after I stopped, I stopped at the beginning of the summer of 2014. And then I got a girlfriend that summer, so then I didn't really care. Yeah, it was my first girlfriend, and <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay, I can take a break from... You know what? This <laughs> dream isn't that big of a deal, I <laughs> no, guess. No, it's not. This I was doing comedy to get your girlfriend anyway, yeah, so exactly. I pretty much... <laughs> I, yeah. I was, this is my end game the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> so then I, I did that through the summer, and I turned 18 at the end of the summer, and... Uh, I was trying to go to Chicago because I that you know oh, that yeah, seemed Chicago's like the awesome. obvious choice yeah, if yeah, you're so right close. there. Yeah, I thought but, about uh, in Chicago for a long time. Yeah, I, I still want to go back there eventually. Oh, yeah. One day I'd like to move there and you know live there for a few years too. Oh heck yeah! But um, I was you know I was 17 and I couldn't get anybody to who was gonna move in with a 17 Plus year old. It's, it's uh, expensive there, you know too. Yeah, exactly. And I and I didn't know what I was doing, but I had some family out here. And they had said before that, like, if you ever want to come stay with us for a little while, it's okay. So I just called up my uncle, and he had an extra room, and he said, you can come stay here as long as you need. Get on your feet and get a job and figure out what Denver's about. So I did that. That's pretty much the coolest. Were they Denver proper there in the city? Um, yeah, so I lived for the first, like, uh, eight or nine months, and well, just until last June, uh, down by DU. Okay. Um, yeah, right right in that area. Yeah, so it was in Denver, yeah, but yeah. Not, not in the city up here. Yeah, pretty close. I mean, Denver's, yeah, exactly. just like for the people that know, just like, yeah, the downtown area and then mm-hmm. the DU is just the college, probably five, ten minute drive tops from uh, the heart of the city. Yeah, it's not too bad at all, yeah. That's pretty cool. So then you were like, that was, that's pretty cool just to be like, did you ever think, you didn't want to go to college or anything like that, or you're just like... Um, I kind of did, but I I couldn't afford it, and mm-hmm. I was like, I just... I couldn't imagine the idea of student loans. I was like, I don't oh know no, that no, at all. definitely. I mean, it was really just like yeah. paying to party for a couple of years, and I mean, like, especially for. Um, I wish a lot of times, <laughs> in some senses, I wouldn't have too. You know, like mm-hmm. done that because it's the same thing that you can learn. You can learn mm-hmm. yourself if you want. And yeah. If you're so serious about comedy, and it is comedy, comedy. Then. Mm-hmm. You don't necessarily. You yeah. Know. Well, I figured I don't. I was. I figured I don't have any money now. I'm not gonna have any money in four years. I might as well just do something else for a couple of years, and then if I want to try college again, then I'll get. Uh, oh yeah. yeah and if like, I look at it, you know. and you'll be more serious about it too. I know. Yeah, I exactly. Taking a couple of years off or mm-hmm. not done it and then like actually matured a little bit and then went back. Like yeah, would have gotten a lot better grades and. Would have done a lot less substances. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> taking yeah. it more serious because I think there is something to be said about taking it serious as a time to actually like grow and take take learning, have it be a priority and not just mm-hmm. getting the homework done so you can go get drunk or whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm trying to have as many life experiences as mm-hmm. I can. You know, I think Denver's a really good place for that right now. I yeah. think it's definitely. Uh, I think it's a good choice to move here now because I think that if you're uh, doing the comedy, I think it's by far one of the best scenes in the country, for mm-hmm. sure. You know, for I mean, for cool shows and also collaboration. Yeah, I yeah, it's it's crazy. I, I, it's like I look at the comedians that have been doing it longer than me, like you and 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 some of these guys, and I and I think you're all great. But even looking at my, even looking at people that started the exact same mm-hmm. time as me, I'm like I'm just as inspired by them. Yeah, like they're working just as hard. Yeah, and, and uh, it's really cool to see that. I think it's one of those things too, where it's like we definitely like watch the young comics. Like I, th- I watch every set that when I go to Mike's, you know, mm-hmm. just to see like who's doing it. Because there's also stuff that I would never. There's stuff you do that uh, like in ever other young comics do. I'm like, dude, I wish I would have done that. You know, mm-hmm. it's like that's that's the coolest part about it. Yeah, exactly. It's like you can get do it for longer and longer, but you still appreciate everything that it is because it's just. Mm-hmm. No matter how long you do it, the funnest stuff is just the dumbest stuff. Yeah, seeing it's that like experimentation and yeah. people trying new things. Or just yeah. see something that I know that I could never think of or that is just so simple but just like so brilliant. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, but it's just yeah. you 
people learning how to be themselves up there and like finding mm-hmm. these gems that yeah exactly doesn't matter how long you've done it you still like, feel like that's the, sh- that's the yeah best. exactly it's really it's really fun yeah. Well, cool, man. Speaking of fun, that is the end of the f- part one with Roger Stafford. Um, before we get out of here, do you want to give uh, give your online stuff? So if people want to follow you on the interwebs. Oh, I don't have much. Uh, just Facebook. Nice You're, Facebook. And, and honestly, I don't even post on that that much. But uh, get off the web. If you, if you yeah, I, uh, I'll just create a Twitter one of these yeah, days. I'll and, give it a and try. And then I'll get your actual mailing address. So we can put your, <laughs> yeah. So if you guys want to send follow him me a handwritten at my house. letter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, send him a poem, um, a thank you card, or some sort of handwritten letter. No, but I guess if you live in Denver and you uh, go to an open mic, you'll find me there. He'll you be there. Give him a, a high five. There's theirs. You can find a uh, list of those on 5280comedy.com. Mm-hmm. So if you want to see Roger Stafford, go to 5280 yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> If you want to follow us, hit us up on Twitter at Words with Wayman, on Facebook, Words with Wayman. Uh, thank you all so much for listening to part one. We will be back shortly with part two. Thanks, Matt. Thank you.